The following is a presentation of the Four Center podcast feed. As Obi-Wan Kenobi once said, hello there, and welcome to Databank Brawl, the podcast where we learn about Star Wars characters, discuss them, share our feelings about these characters, and then make those characters fight for our amusement. I am your host, my name is Joseph Scrimshaw. With me, as always, is Mr. Ken Knapsack. Glad to be here, as always, looking forward to killing some of my favorite characters. Absolutely. You're going to get an opportunity to do that, I think. And uh, we also oh, have... Oh, no. <laughs> you, oh, it'll be okay. I'm, oh, I'll, no. I'll be right there with you. We can hug if necessary. <laughs> and make it audible. Okay. Because <laughs> it's a podcast. People need to hear the hug. Uh, we also have two other fine guests. Uh, I should say three fine guests, because as yeah. always, we have a little sip of whiskey as well. Absolutely. Just to get us in the mood, to keep us fueled. We also have from uh, Star Wars Explained, Alex Damon and Molly Clark. Hey. Hi. Thank you guys so much for uh, being here and doing Databank Brawl. Yeah, thanks yeah. for having Looking us. Looking forward to it. Yeah, have you ever in your mind uh, created a story where you just murder senselessly a Star Wars character before? Is this a new experience for you? Um, I don't think I ever murdered anyone. I did write a sequel to Return of the Jedi when I was like nine, but uh, it was pretty family friendly. As, as did I. Were you Han Solo's kid too in your version? <laughs> no. I'm, I've imagined a couple of different ways to kill Jar Jar. It's, that's just like a oh, daily wow. shower thought. <laughs> How must I kill? Is it is it compulsive? Can you not get out of the shower unless Jar Jar has died? Yeah, it's like, each day like gets more and more creative. How, 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 Take him out. That's awesome. Well, that is definitely in the spirit of Data Bank Brawl. If you are listening for the first time for some reason, here is how it works. I get these entries specifically from StarWars.com Data Bank, so it is minty, fresh, it is canon, it is accurate. I want to be accurate in front of uh, Alex from Star Wars Explained. Keep it all uh, correct and proper. And then uh, Ken sometimes ventures into the wilds of Wikipedia, and we find out some additional information that is probably accurate. Probably <laughs> accurate. Most likely. Most likely accurate. Potentially accurate. But Potentially accurate. Uh, are you guys ready for your first combatant? Yes, sir. Excellent. Our first combatant is a one who has been requested quite a bit uh, by fans. Weetef Siubi. Say now? <laughs> yes. I, I see. I like saying the names, and sometimes people are like, ah, and then sometimes there's audible confusion, uh, which is just fine, because the point yeah. is learning. Yeah. Here is what uh, StarWars.com databank has to say about Weetef Siubi, a, diminut- a diminutive Talpini, good God, these things are hard to say, and I've only had a sip of whiskey. A diminutive Telpini, Weetef, is a valuable member of Saw's band of partisans. His small size makes him ideal. <laughs> Alex just <laughs> realized who he is. Oh, yes. <laughs> His small size makes him ideal for infiltration missions in Jeddah's holy city, and he's both an expert sharpshooter and a clever builder of sticky bombs used to bring down Imperial scout walkers and assault tanks. So... Is that everybody's on uh, on the same page now of who Weetef is, right? Took me a while, but it's... Uh, <laughs> yeah. some Googling, it's, yeah. Uh, it's, it's Warwick, right? Yeah. 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 Got it. Uh, yeah, and Weetef has uh, got some fans. Uh, I think his uh, his brief moments in Rogue One are memorable and powerful. I think that's mm-hmm. why people like him, because he looks like he is uh, eager to do violence. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, how do you guys feel about the character? Alex, the dime drop for you, where you're like, ah, oh, that guy, do yeah. you like him? Yeah, I just needed to hear Saw's name, and then I was okay. like, all right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I like Weetif. Um He is probably the one of Saw's people that just has the most character, I mean, that you only see for a second or two. Um, although Beezer Fortuna, I mean, <laughs> yes, who can forget? Beezer's fought but, here on Databank <laughs> with his desiccated leku. But yeah, I love him. Just the tiny guy hiding behind the wall and then running out and shooting along with the rest of them. So yeah, I'm excited to see who we're going to pit him up against. Yeah, yeah. And uh, how about you, Molly? Do you have feelings about Wee Tef? Um, Wee Tef? Thankfully, like Rogue One is pretty fresh in my mind. So yeah, I liked him, and I'm excited to see like what kind of stealthy things he can do because he's so little. <laughs> nice. She's going right to the tactics, which is a great way to approach Data Bank Brawl. Ken, how do you feel about this character? I, I quite do like him now that I've placed him. <laughs> now yeah. that it took me. Uh, I'm still catching up on the uh, Rogue One uh, visual encyclopedia. Um, I, I do like it. I, 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 he stood out uh, probably initially because it's it's you know Warwick Davis, and you're kind of focused on that. But like like Moroff, he's one of those guys, part of the partisans that uh, you know, like like Alex said, had a little bit more personality to him, a little bit more focused on. So he stood out, and uh, I uh, I think he he'll be I think he'll be a dirty fighter too. I think so too. He, yeah, he's uh, he 
the mix sticky bombs. That yeah. sounds dirty. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think one of the things that Ken and I have discussed a lot about Rogue One over all the Force Center uh, podcast feed is, you know, it is a story of rebels deciding to fight. So I think we get excited right. anytime we see a character who's like, no, I'm I'm taking him out. I don't care. So I think the fact that uh, for me that he is so eager to shoot and seems mm-hmm. to be almost be getting joy from it makes right. him an exciting character in Rogue One to me. Right. What do we uh, got for any information on Wikipedia? Uh, no quote attached to him at this point, but interesting behind-the-scenes stuff there. He's named uh, Weetief because he is. Uh, he's the, the design was inspired by a piranha, and the name is a, 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 a basically a version of saying "We Teeth Sharp Incisors." So okay, there you go. We Teeth in C U B is because the they shoot bees out of their mouths. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, exactly. Does he have a species? Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, uh, Talpini. Talpini. Talpini, right. Talpini. Yeah. Homeworld? Uh, um, does not list that. Hmm. So could you do a video on that so I could learn? <laughs> well, if it's not there, I doubt it's anywhere else. <laughs> uh, have you ever, do you ever do a Star Wars uh, just then shrugging emoji as a video? <laughs> like, this information is not, here's a list of information that is not available. Yeah, yeah I mean, I get questions all the time where I'm just like, if I knew, I would have put it in the video. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just go, over to, go over to Twitter and ask Pablo. Yes, <laughs> he will love that, and you will get it. Absolutely <laughs> snark-free response, and it will be just fine. Cheeriness. Nothing cheeriness. cheeriness. Okay, so no other details, really. Nobody. Um, he hasn't it, featured any short stories no, yet. Uh, well, he's, he's been a Guardian of the Wills, uh, the, okay. the book of uh, Halfway uh, through Sherrod that. and, uh, and Bays. Uh, yeah, he's got, I do like his rifle. is a DH-17 E-11 hybrid, uh, and it is a Tibana jacked oh. version, which I like. The Tabana Jack just seems like a cool like gym turn. Like yeah. that guy's that guy's Tabana Jack. <laughs> t- Tabana gas, right? Yep. That's yep. like a couple different uh, ways we've seen in canon that Tabana gets used. So that's pretty yep. awesome. Yeah. It's a valuable resource. Yeah, put it in your gun. Nice. I like that his gun is a hybrid. I do. Like that Saw's whole group is kind of like a ragtag Cobbled team together. of guys. It's yeah. Like, yeah. Like melded together for a yeah. lot of things. They're very punk. <laughs> <laughs> Especially Beezer <laughs> Fortuna. A great punk band name yeah. right there. They're all the right. sex pistols of the Star Wars galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The hybrid sex pistols. All right. He is going to be fighting your next combatant, which is an Imperial Royal Guard. Oh. Yeah, that's the one that might hurt you, Ken, because I know you like your Imperial yeah. Royal Guards. Oh, I like them. Uh, now, here is what StarWars.com databank has to say about the Imperial Royal Guards. Resplendent in crimson robes and armor, the Imperial Royal Guard protected the Emperor. Secrecy shrouded the Guard with rumors abounding about the Sentinel's backgrounds and combat capabilities. See, I mm. like this when the official databank builds in mystery of, like, we know there's not an answer. We don't want you to know the answer. Yeah. We want you to imagine who are they? Ooh, where'd they come from? Yeah. Do they know Force stuff? Ooh, who knows? <laughs> uh, Molly, what do you, how, how do you feel about the Imperial Royal Guard? Are they the kind that have, uh, of troopers that have grabbed you? Uh, have we ever seen them without their robes on? Yeah, I don't see. believe we've seen a nude <laughs> Royal Guard. Uh, well, I mean, no, I mean, like, if... In their the, jumpers, and their red jumpers. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. in their little onesies. Um, yeah. No, like, their armor underneath... Because oh, I know the, the blue thing. guards we've seen in actual like battle armor. But. I have spent a lot of time in my youth uh, lifting up <laughs> their uh, robes <laughs> on the action figure for sure. And under there, I think it was just like a red, big red jumper. I don't know. I think they're all talk. Oh, <laughs> oh. they're just yeah. tall and kind of they ju- they just look scary. I don't I don't know. Mm-hmm. All right, Alex, how do you feel about Imperial Royal Guards? See, I'm gonna have to filter out because we're going canon only, right? Correct. Yeah. Uh, they have a lot more lore going on in Legends, and yeah, you see them without the robes, and they look baller. Okay. Yeah, like, they can do some stuff. So, like, that Crimson Empire comic, I'm going to have to not... Just got to ignore that. <laughs> um, we do see them in action in the Lando comic. Yeah. Uh, we see them in action in Lords of the Sith, and they're pretty awesome. Like, they're they're the best of the best soldiers, but th- at the end of the day, they're just soldiers. Yeah. Mm. So now, what do you know in canon about their pikes these days? Are they uh, are they vibro pikes? Are they just uh, pointy? Do they have electricity running through them? I don't know that they've gone into it in canon or not. I'm I'm not sure on that though. Okay. So, um, well, we can uh, I, just I, indulge I guess, our imaginations. Though. I would guess it's still a force pike. Yeah. It still kind of has a jolt. Uh, that's what I would go with off mm-hmm. the just my gut feeling, but. 
Um, nothing confirmed in canon as far as I remember. Okay. I love that your gut feeling is electricity. That's great. So we'll go with that. Ken, uh, what, are you, what are you looking up there? I see uh, you staring yeah, at your Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm looking at the equipment again, Wikipedia, which is, it, it, we joke, but it, it's pretty revi- reliable on this kind yeah. of stuff. But uh, in equipment, they were uh, completely covered in red flowing blood red robes. We know yeah. that. Okay. Uh, they wielded <laughs> force pikes, a type of melee weapon with a nice. vibro edged head. Additionally, each of their robes also hid a heavy blaster, a vibro blade and various other weaponry. Ooh. Yeah. That's a good one to keep in um, mind. When on the battlefield, Royal Guards would abandon their traditional weaponry in favor of combat effective arms, including the T-21 light repeating blaster, smart rocket, and the homing shot. Now, I don't know. That might be from Battlefront, <laughs> to be honest. I like the clarity, though, that they don't just stand in the middle of a big blaster <laughs> battle poking the air. <laughs> like, we can't, I'm sorry. These are our force spikes. We have to poke. Uh, yeah. So, um... Yeah, that's that's a lot. Okay, a lot of cool. Uh, Ken, re- briefly review your feelings because I know you are a big fan of these guys. I love these guys. Yeah, I think it connects to my childhood when I I don't know green's my favorite color, but uh, the Crimson Guard for Cobra. <laughs> was one of my favorite things, which are all red, and they got these masks, and they're specialized, and they're a, a kind of they can go undercover into communities, and they can do all this work for Cobra against the battle against GI Joe. So, for some reason, I think as a young kid, I just translated that love of the Crimson Guard to the Emperor's Royal Guards, yeah. and was just fascinated by. What we don't know, fascinated by the look, the mask, I think the, the design is great. I love in Phantom Menace when uh, the first versions of them start showing up and Palpatine's like, I need, I need some help. I, I'm up to some things. Yeah. <laughs> I need people around me that are going to protect me. Uh, and the, so they got the kind of blue version. Uh, I just, I don't, I, it's, it's like my love of the Biker Scouts. I just grew up loving these kind of weird costumes that kind of look cool and sleek. I wasn't a cool kid myself, so I think I needed uh, robes and masks to make me look <laughs> to feel, feel cool. cool. Yeah, I love them because I think they are. Uh, they do just look cool, and they also just speak to Palpatine's theatricality. Yeah. Like I, my guards could just be dressed like stormtroopers, and they could be the best of the best. But these guys are going to look mysterious and right. frightening, and just uh, they're, they're going to be red too. Nobody else gets to be red. So my guards <laughs> are going to have some flair. People mm-hmm. are going to know when they see my guards. Any other thoughts or feelings about Imperial Royal Guards? Yeah, I don't know. Over there? Alex? I think yeah. ready to go. You, you ready to good? kill one of these creatures? Alright, in that case, let us fight. Now, as always, we start with deciding where this fight is going to happen. We can't. We try to keep it generally in the time period that these two characters would have existed in together, and, mm-hmm. you know, we got a pretty good time frame there, so where do we want this fight to happen? Mm. Do you have a favorite planet, Alex? Um... Well, if we're going to where they both existed, I mean, we can go Jeddah, or we could also go Imperialis, the Emperor's mm. ship. But if we go there, they're gonna mm. that might give them a little bit of an edge. And I don't know if they need more of an edge. You know what? Weetief is a little badass, and we've all before we even got into the fight talked about how sneaky he is. Yeah. Let's give Weetief a challenge and yeah, put him on so. the Imperialis. Yeah, yeah. I I think jumping off that, I think we saw what happened on Jeddah. Yep. We saw that the Partisans, some of them may have survived, most of them did not. I think Weetief survives. I think I think after that fight, because his sticky bombs were in action, I think he was getting a drink somewhere else. <laughs> he just and he and I think he escaped and ends up on uh, the Imperialis. Or what? Did that correct me? There's different versions of the Imperialis, right? It's it's like a. Uh, Emperor had several of them at different ports. Right. I'm, I'm considering the one from the Lando. The one comic. from the Lando okay, that had so all of his dark side dark goodies side. on it. Okay, yeah. so we, and there were royal guards on there, right. which we saw. So Weetief thinks uh, he escapes this explosion, uh, and he sees that uh, outside of the city, there's one more transport heading back to a Star Destroyer that got left behind. So it didn't get destroyed in the explosion of uh, Jeddah City. And he, he makes his way out there, and he stows aboard thinking, I'm going to get vengeance. Right. He is armed to the teeth. He has his hybrid blaster. Uh, and strangely, the this pod doesn't go back to the Star Destroyer. goes to this strange ship that he yeah. doesn't know what it is. Yeah. He finds himself on it. And now, uh, Alex, describe what, what this ship is like. What does Weetief see? I mean, he comes on, and it's just... By all first looks, it's just a normal luxury yacht. Don't know who it's from <laughs> or who owns it. Um, she's just going to go exploring. There's a lot of weird art in here. I mean, it's definitely a fancy, expensive ship. Um, I guess there's got to be a pilot on there if it's just out in space. 
Um, but, so, but, be, it, but it's just, it but could be a droid. Mind, yeah, yeah, but to his sure. mind, it's just it's just a yacht. He doesn't see yeah. any blatant Imperial uh, insignia or anything. N- not at first, um, but there's a locked door, and I imagine he would have the skills to crack that door. Yeah, so I think he puts in a... He's got all sorts of different sizes of sticky bombs because he understands the importance of variations in size. Right. I think he puts a tiny little sticky bomb in this door because it bugs him that it's locked. He blows it. What does he see in there, Molly? He sees uh, a red guard eating lunch. (laughs) (laughs) All right, now let's uh, really walk through that because does the guard have his helmet off... Or does he have a straw shoved up his helmet, Ken? It's like, I'm going to go to G.I. Joe again. It's like Cobra Commander in the first miniseries is eating a turkey leg. And there's a bite out of the turkey leg, but he has his glass mask on. Okay. To this day, we G.I. Joe fans do not know how Cobra <laughs> Commander ate that turkey. I like this, and I'm going to paint that picture. Yeah. So we def- he there's a little uh, yeah. brilliant little explosion. And then the door slides open, and he sees a guard from the, from the back, yeah. the helmet and the robes, and he sees the sandwich. Yeah. And... Then he thinks, oh, that, that guy must have an opening in his mask, and I can just shoot his face, and this will be fine if there's a problem. But then the guard slowly turns, and the mask is still on. Still on. And Wee Deef, as brave as he is, is a little terrified. Yeah. How do you eat that chicken? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I forget exactly how Wee Deef sounds in Rogue One. Does he make a sound, Alex? I think he just screams a he little bit. He just screams? Bit. Maybe yeah. He might not even do that. So but. I think he screams again here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's a strange guttural. It's a hybrid scream. Mm-hmm. Two different pitches. It's amazing. Just, uh, know, what I'm imagining, though, is this locked door. This room is full of Sith artifacts, and in the middle is a table that normally has a Sith helmet on it. But yeah. the royal guard ha- needs some place to eat, so he's just brushed <laughs> the, the helmet aside, and he's using it as a table, getting grease all over it. Like uh, Palpatine would be furious, and he doesn't. It, now he needs to kill Wee Teeth yeah. because no one can see this. <laughs> oh, that's a great point. Absolutely. Absolutely. So they both have a reason to fight. Yeah. Weetief came here hoping to kill Imperials. Yes. And this Imperial sees a, a little uh, Talipian, Talipian uh, yeah. Talpini, Talpini, a little Talpini, jeez, come yeah. on, Star Wars, a little Talpini uh, <laughs> who needs to die. Yeah. Uh, so I think uh, Weetief's blaster comes up, that force pike comes up, mm-hmm. and who gets the first shot off, Molly? Does the does Weetief manage to get a shot off from his hybrid blaster before he gets force poked with a force pike? I think he does. Yeah, nice. he's, he's on his toes. He's in unfamiliar grounds. He gets the first shot in, mm-hmm. barrel, barrel rolls, and probably <laughs> hides behind one of those Sith artifacts. Okay, so he fires, he barrel rolls, and he hides behind. What kind of Sith artifact, Alex? I'm going to guess. I mean, there's got to be like a <laughs> suit of armor in there. Okay. Ooh, so yeah. he, he could crawl all, all up in there. <laughs> like an ancient uh, like uh, kind of Sith armor? Like... A right. prototype of Vader, even? Possibly. Just something he can get in there, so he's now squirming his way around, and now the the guard's, like, trying to poke at him, but he doesn't know where he is, so it's okay. like when you're in the ventilation shaft and someone's, like, stabbing up, and it's... He's in the ventilation stack. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I like, like a bad zookeeper trying to get his space monkey. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, just, I think... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think the shot went off, and I think yeah. it hit some other artifact. Mm-hmm. And because I think the the uh, guard managed to get out of the way, so he could immediately start poking. <laughs> so I think exactly what you're saying is terrible, uh, frightening zookeeper. He's poking yeah. away. Uh, but this other box mm-hmm. got shot and exploded, and something's coming out of it. What is what's coming out of that, Ken? Uh, what comes out of it is is um, a very special uh, a weapon. Mm. It is a lightsaber. Type of um, it's not quite well. We'll just say it's a lightsaber whip, which is from like the Darth Bane books and okay. all this kind of stuff. Uh, it exists, but not so much in canon yet, right? Um, not the light whip in the way that you're describing yeah. it, but the Zygerians, mm. the slavers, did have a light whip of sorts. Of sorts. So it's it's not something that can like cut a limb off, right? But it can do some serious damage. It can do some damage. Okay, it's a Zygerian light whip. A Zygerian that, light that whip that falls out. Falls out. Polluted by the dark side. It's yes, been used it's, by ancient yeah. Sith to torture. So the, the crystal has been with bled. Evil. Yes. Yeah. No, absolutely. It's pulsing with evil. This thing. Yeah. Uh, so that's going on in the background, right. but neither. Of our combatants notice this, right. and our Imperial Royal Guard. Now, as we all know, uh, all these people have names. What is our Imperial Royal Guard's name? I throw it open to the table. Does anybody have a name? Do they think, who is this guy who is so bold, or this woman who is so bold to eat 
chicken on a Sith artifact table. Uh, Yekrut Gel. Yekrut Gel. Yekrut Gel. Is turkey leg backwards. <laughs> I mean, excellent. It can't get better than that. Yes. A- any Star Wars name is just any other word backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Say In and Out Burger backwards right now. Me and two. Grabber. He's in the next bro. That's nice. how do you how do you say it again? Uh, y- Yekret Gill. Yekret Gill. Yekret uh, Gill. All right. Like Yekret it. Gill is poking the Sith armor, making his troubles worse. I, yeah. Worse. I think we're learning that Yekret Gill isn't that bright because what right. he wants to cover up is damage to Sith artifacts. And he's poking one. <laughs> he's poking one. <laughs> he's poking one. Okay. So what's that? What does he manage to to get into that armor and get to Wee Teeth? Um, he gets. He's he gets he he's got that cape's in the way, mm. so he able you know you ever like if you're in a, in a cabin staying on vacation you take a shower and you got the towel wrapped around you be trying to get the pants on but it's too yeah. cold so you're kind of <laughs> hopping around but the towel's still on you he gets he gets the leg part of the armor on like the waist down he's got half the Sith armor on oh so the the guard is putting the armor on yeah okay so he's 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 got wee teeth. Out, away from the armor. Wait, yeah, he's like, and oh he's, shit, I need to use this. He's putting it on. Okay, yeah. I think I, I think Wee Teeth sees this that yeah. the guard has one uh, of these armor legs on. Yeah, and I think Wee Teeth is realizing, hey, ankles are kind of my thing. <laughs> <laughs> and if he gets both ankles protected, <laughs> yeah. I'm screwed. So I think he goes for the ankle. Uh, Molly, what does Wee Teeth do to mm, turkey leg backwards? <laughs> oh, what's the, what's it again? Uh, Yekret Gel. Yekret Gel. So Wee Teeth goes to Yekret Gill's ankle, his exposed ankle. What does he do to it? He puts a bomb on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and then and then where does Wee Teeth go? Does Wee Teeth run away? Does he try to hide? Yeah, he hides behind another Sith artifact. Like it's, I think it's like a bust of of Plagueis. Like oh, just yeah. Like an artifact, like Palpatine's like... You know, I liked it enough, but I'll keep it hidden. Yeah. Right? yeah. And the guard's like, ooh, I can't mess that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I'm yeah. in big trouble. And uh, yeah. now, do you think that, uh, y- uh, do you think that, uh, we'll just call him uh, Ecrit, grill. Ecrit grill. Yeah, Ecrit grill. Ecrit, yeah, yeah. <laughs> macaroni grill, sounds right. Like, sounds like a Mediterranean restaurant, yeah. Ecrit grill. Uh, do you think that he notices? I kind of think he doesn't notice the bomb, Ken. Yeah, it's he's so tiny... uh, obsessed with what is happening to yeah, him. Yeah, it's like an old, an old baseball prank called the hot foot. Yeah, where, where you'd light it. Uh, Roger McDowell for the Mets in the '80s was an expert at that. You climb underneath, and your foot, the, the, your teammate's foot starts burning, and they yeah. don't even know. I think that's what's going off. It's a little smart bomb, little sticky bomb. Ba boof! Yeah, like he's struggling to get. Oh, I gotta get. And then like that, he's like, "Is that? What is that?" Yeah, I and mean, I think Wee Teeth at yeah. this point is laughing, and I think it's yeah. an incredibly disturbing sound as it echoes yeah. around the Sith chamber. I think it's like, <laughs> <laughs> and it's echoing around. And that, no, you think the bomb went off? I think it went off enough okay. to catch the bottom of his robe on fire. Okay, so you think it's so just it's about just like flames. Little, yeah. <laughs> like a firework? Yeah. <laughs> so this is more like a sticky match yeah. <laughs> than a sticky bomb. Nice. Okay, so now uh, he's highly flammable. Uh, obviously, he's yeah. draped in robes. Yeah. Uh, so I think he starts to his robes start to glow up, go up yeah. in flame. And I think he does what I'm sure he's been trained to do, which is stop, drop, and roll. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So he's stopping, he's dropping, he's rolling. And I think Wee Teeth is now feeling cocky, like he's got this. Yeah. So I think, uh, Alex, I think, he, I think Wee Teeth moves forward, and he's about to just blast uh, Yikrit uh, Gill in the face. But then he notices something filtering through the room exploded from that box he shot. Well, I mean, the, the the entire room is full of the dark side. So the yeah, I, what I what I would like to see is uh, Wee Teeth just kicks off the helmet. He wants to see the face of his foe. He's got honor. He wants to look him in the eyes. Is that honorable? I don't know. <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> Game of Thrones landed. Yeah, yeah, he wants to see the face of his enemy, so he kicks that helmet off. Yeah, excellent. I, yeah. And I I think what happens is Wee Teeth. I like where you're going with this. As long as it's honorable. I'm going to murder this guy. Yeah. I feel the dark side, so maybe even my honor is being corrupted. And I think he moves forward. And then I think these strange wisps. That's what we said were coming out of the box, right? You said yep. strange wisps. Wisps or the whips? Uh, the whips. The whips. The whip. But there's whips. wisps coming there's off wisps. the whips as well. There's, there's whips <laughs> these on the are floor. Sith there's influenced whips. Yeah. So they're like, yeah, there's yeah. wisps and whips. Yeah. It's yeah. a wispy whips. Yeah. Uh, and I think that uh, strangely, the whip has been enchanted by dark Sith magic oh, yeah. to protect the oh. guard of the room. Oh, yeah. So I think the whip, not manned by anything, Ooh. 
suddenly slashes out, whips out, and wraps around Weetief's neck. Oh, wow. Right and pulls him away right as he's going to shoot <laughs> Yitek Gill in the face. Yeah. And uh, Weetief's shot goes wild. It goes wild. So I think... Uh, that uh, uh, this is like the Doctor wild. Strange cape. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And the, that blaster shot like boom, shoots off, and it's some weird like portrait of Chief Palpatine from Naboo. Just sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> boom! Hits right in the middle. Right in the middle. Yep. Right. Good old right. Senator Palpatine. Yeah, yeah. And then it chars it, and then mm-hmm. the face looks like he will. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and it's got a little microchip in it, and it says, "I can't, I can't hold it anymore." <laughs> it turns evil. It's great. Uh, so now I think uh, Yi Tech Grill has one last. Chance to either put Wee Teef down or get out of there. Molly, what does he do? He gets up and I think he latches onto this whip. I think mm-hmm. he grabs it and uses it to his his advantage and uh, just starts just starts whipping. Just, just, yeah. Does he choke or whip? Is he choking? Oh, oh he's choking. He's okay, choking. He's, choking. he's like, you interrupted my lunch. I'm just trying to have. <laughs> I'm just. Gonna, I'm just trying to. You know. Get down from my hard days of work, and yeah, and I like that yeah. he says all this too. Yeah. I mean, it comes. I, I mean, hard he, day of work. He's he's uh, he's served my, this chicken. He set my robes on fire. Yeah. yeah, he serves an evil master, but he's just he's a working guy, right? Yeah. So he's the, ignoring that his robes are on fire. Yeah. He climbs up on the table and he is choking Wee Teeth. Wee Teeth is swinging through the air, and at oh, this wow. point, we are going to pause our narrative as we right. always do, right? And we stop the narrative for a moment to just talk as humans, as people, about who we think should win and who we want to win. So Ken, mm. who do you who do you think deserves to win this fight, and you, who do you want to win? I, uh, deserve, we teeth. Okay. Who do I want? Is is Mr. Turkey Leg? Okay. I think he's just a hardworking man who worked his way up the ranks. Um, you know, I sometimes he just wanted a chicken leg. He's like that stormtrooper on uh, Wobani who was just sitting there, just, uh, <laughs> just depressed. <laughs> uh, uh, um, I, I think uh, the Imperialis is a great. A assignment of honor, but it's a boring one. It's like sitting there. You never there. see any action. Those two royal guards on Mustafar, I feel for them. Yeah. They had to sit and watch Vader take a bath. <laughs> That's all they did. <laughs> and from the back. Right, from the back. Not even the good parts, you know? <laughs> uh, can't, can't look Anakin in the eyes. So, um, and they only have Vinay to hang out with. It's a mess. Yeah. So this is like that, too. You're sitting here floating in space, guarding a, 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 a spaceship museum. I feel... For uh, for Mister Mister Clegg, yeah. All right, Alex, weigh in. Uh, I I agree that Wee Teef he has the the element of surprise here. Um, I'd like to see him win, but I also think that just given a fair fight, I mean, Imperial Guard's probably going to take Wee Teef. Mm. Um, not to mention this guy's been in this room. For God knows how long, and the dark side has corrupted him. <laughs> yeah. he, he could even be a clone trooper. Like the some oh, of the, yeah. some of the top clone troopers were Imperial guards. Uh, he he could still be just a seasoned veteran. And yet, like I mean, I still feel for the clone troopers. So yeah, I, right. I, I, I would right. like to see the clone trooper come out on top. All right, all right. You're you're flipping the narrative to what? clone trooper, but I like it. I like it, uh, Molly. I want to see Wee Teef win as well okay. because yeah. you're right. You, he caught him off guard. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> pun accepted, regardless. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, he had the element of surprise. He's used to the, like kind of like guerrilla warfare mm-hmm. type fighting. That's true too. And uh, I think he can get out of this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. I think I'm. Uh, I think I'm gonna. There's not a tie. I was gonna say I'm gonna break the tie. Yeah. Uh, well, there's kind of a tie because I. I think I. I want Weed Teeth to win this combat right. for a couple of reasons. I think the the spirit of a noble fighter yeah. should be embraced. He did uh, catch him by surprise. I think they're both a little mm-hmm. surprised right now. Yep. Uh, I like that he's a clone trooper. That's great. Uh, that mm-hmm. uh, Gil is a, a clone trooper. Yeah. Here is uh, the thing I think about the dark side is you can be filled with it, but the point of the dark side is to use it to focus, right? Because if you're just angry with no focus, you're just a big rambling mess. Yeah. And that's what being a Sith is, is focusing your anger mm-hmm. and mastering it. And I don't think the guy who's on fire and doesn't realize <laughs> it is too focused right now. So I think, uh, I think in our narrative, mm-hmm. I want to grant life 
to uh, your dick leg, uh, right. you dick gill. Uh, yeah. Let him. He's gonna live. He's gonna live. He's a noble clone trooper, just trying to do what's right. He's okay. been perverted by the dark side by eating chicken in this room every day. <laughs> just just <laughs> bored out of his mind. So he's gonna live. But yeah. I think we teeth should win the combat. Mm-hmm. So let's tell that story. Yeah. And he's he's choked right now. He's on the whip. Yep. Kind of, can mm-hmm. take us. He's uh, he's dangling. We teeth needs to find a way out of there. Yeah. Uh, the robes are on fire. Uh, uh, and uh, he as he's kind of. It's a violent picture, but but uh, you know our, our guard is up on that up high. He's got the whip and he's kind of trying to swing around. And Weetief's kind of like a uh, you know a pendulum swinging back and forth, right? <laughs> it's and like no- the balance of the force, it's right? An image. And he notices each time he goes to the left, whoo, he's getting closer to that chicken leg. Whoo. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice. Whoo. So Excellent he just, foreshadowing. Yep, he just does this and with like his fingers, he grabs. That chicken leg, nice, and swings back, and as uh, you know, he's 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 got he's got some skills. You know, he's got some skills. Not quite an aerial artist, but he's got some skills. He <laughs> comes back, he gets some momentum. There's a little pause. The guard is kind of looking like, "What is that? That's my chicken!" And in this hap, he he uh, we teeth curls himself up, gets his momentum, and kind of the whip doubles back on itself, and he just lands right on the chest, and they both fall off the table. Okay. And then Weetief's trying to find a way to choke him with the chicken leg, even though the mask is on. He's just pushing it up against the mask. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I like that the uh, uh, leg got the uh, Gel got the uh, got the mask fully back on, and now right. he is being menaced with a chicken. Yeah. Alex, what happens next? Um, I think Gel through the power of the dark side. Clearly, that's how he took a bite out of oh, the turkey leg in oh, the beginning. Oh, nice. Yeah. So he just, just starts chomping away. So he be- uh, That's all he wanted from the start. <laughs> so he just keeps eating his chicken he leg, so there's nothing to choke the on. The chicken, yes. I think that's great. I think it's we- a great counter. I think Weetief is utterly confused for a moment, and I think <laughs> he realizes- Do you have to roll for food? Like, do you have to roll for that? <laughs> no, I mean, I think he's what I think what he's hoping is like. Well, maybe I can still kill him if he leaves me the bone. But in, even the bone starts to disappear. Oh, okay. And I think it's like my dad, who's Russian. He, he <laughs> eats everything down to the gristle. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's taking it all out. Uh, Gal. Is it true to learn this power? <laughs> <laughs> I think Weetief knows. I need to get out of here, but yeah. I don't end a fight until I know I've won. Right. Now, he, th- it's important to remember th- the robes are still on fire. <laughs> the robes are on fire. <laughs> the robes, the robes, yeah. they're still yeah. a little bit on yeah. fire. Uh, so I think Weetief knows that I need a distraction to put this guy down and I can make my escape. Right. So he looks around the room. He looks around at his arsenal of tools. The The chicken bone is not going to make it through the mask, and it's dis- disappearing. Molly, what other trick does Weetief have up his sleeve that he pulls on this Imperial Royal Guard? Well, he's got his bombs, he's got his gun, he's got his stealthiness. I don't know, I think, I think he pulls out another bomb and, and shoves it up the mask. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I like this idea very much. So, uh, <laughs> But he's, he's down to his, like, not-so-great sticky bombs. Yeah. yeah. They either go off or they don't. It's, like a, it's sure. a stink bomb. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think this I like is that. more for annoyance yeah. than it is for damage. Yeah. Uh, so I think he wedges this bomb up, and I think some mysterious force near the mouth mm. takes one of Weetief's fingers off. Mm. He pulls it out. It is uh, spurting a, some color of blood. Uh, <laughs> purple. Pur- pur- purple. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, purple. Talpinis have. Talpini yeah, has yeah. have purple blood. Sure. Yeah. Cannon. Yeah. Uh, he is spurting <laughs> blood, but he knows that he got that stink bomb in there. And Weetief starts heading to the door. He, he looks at all of this horrible stuff. He thinks, should I steal any of it? And it's like, no, it's awful. I can feel right. it. And uh, uh, Gel gets up. And then, poof, poof, shooting, the eye, eyeglasses shatter. <laughs> shooting out of it is just a horrific smell. <laughs> and it is so overpowering yeah. that he collapses on the floor. Does it, mm, 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 yep, yeah. yep, like an ATSD like a, going down. Yep, exactly. yep, he wobbles, the smell overwhelms him, and he falls down, and he smashes his face on the inside of the mask. There's something oh, broken under there. Oh, man. It's a sickening sound, a Not sickening perfect. smell. This is an evil place that <laughs> reeks of stinking chicken. And Weetief says, I'm, I'm getting out of I'm here. I'm getting out of here. Uh, so Weetief makes his way back, yeah, and he gets back to his probe, and he launches himself off to the safety mm-hmm. of space. Yeah. What happens to your Tegel? 
uh, he, the, the droid autopilot, that's, I believe, that we've got going on, yeah. never really picks up on anything. Um, uh, the droid heads back to Corson. The ship parks, Imperialis. And uh, the guard is left to, like, clean up a mess. <laughs> Just sitting there like, oh, man, Palpatine's going to hate me. And I think uh, I think uh, Sheev does an unannounced inspection. I like this. One of the rare times that he comes down out of the castle. Uh, I think Janice Grijadis is there. Uh, they all kind of walk on board. And... Uh, uh, look, he looks around the room. Uh, things don't seem right. Mm-hmm. The armor is standing up. There's like a like carbon scoring type of blast marks on the leg. There's uh, whatever the Star Wars universe version of Scotch tape is yeah. on the whip box. <laughs> yep, yep. There's a there's a loose wisp. <laughs> of some strange watching. evil thing yeah. floating about. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Palpatine um, doesn't say anything. He just kind of looks around. And leaves, and uh, our guard thinks he's got away with it. And the next day, he gets a memo: no eating in the break room. <laughs> <laughs> and he reads it out loud to himself yeah. in Palpatine's voice: <laughs> no eating in the break room. <laughs> and that is our story. Thank you guys so much for joining us <laughs> for a Data Bank Brawl. It's hard to describe people what it is until you've experienced <laughs> it. Very odd collection of, like, let's be really uh, careful about this, Ken. <laughs> yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> Who cares? Yeah, chicken. Yeah, that's a thing. Anyway, thank you guys so much uh, for joining us. Alex and Molly, can you tell people where uh, they can find all your great Star Wars work? Uh, yeah, our YouTube channel is called Star Wars Explained. We also have a vlog channel called Malik's Vlogs. We are on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, all of them Star Wars Explained. Yep. Awesome. We'll go check those out. They're great work. Great work. Yeah. Uh, and it's uh, uh, in the spirit of Data Bank Brawl, uh, in that it is, you can learn a lot uh, from absolutely. you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Almost I, as much as you can learn on this show. Yeah, <laughs> I absolutely endorse what, the, what they do on that channel. I've been a fan of it for a while. But uh, I would request, Alex, that maybe you do a short three minute video on new Wee Teef and Emperor's Royal Guard canon that we learned here today. <laughs> I, think I have to now. <laughs> Ken, where can people find you? You can find me at Ken Napsock, also on the app Anchor doing the show Daily Thrones, talking Game of Thrones daily. Get it? I do get it. Uh, if you guys have uh, characters that you want to see, both of these characters were requested by multiple people. Write into us on any of our social media and let us know who you want to see fight. Use the hashtag Databank Brawl so I can find them. We, of course, have our Patreon. It is at patreon.com slash force center. We are building to our next goal of getting new theme music. If you back us at uh, just $2 a month, you get access to our monthly bonus uh, Patreon-only episode, Finish the Fan Fiction. We're also building to, uh, 200 reviews on iTunes. When we get 200 reviews on iTunes, we'll do a special episode of Databank Brawl featuring major characters. Uh, You can find me on the Anchor app doing uh, Head Cannon. That's the name of my station, a fun comedy take on pop culture. Also, my podcast, Obsessed. You can also find me on all the social medias at Joseph Scrimshaw. You can like Force Center on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Force Center Pod. And until next time, as Luke Skywalker once said while no one was really listening to him, I care. That's it for Databank Brawl. (laughs) 